welcome to this class on um, the economic analysis. Today we are talking about the general structure of economic analysis, uh, therefore introducing the main issues that we'll uh, see in the next, in the next classes. Uh, the outline of today is organized as follows. First of all, we'll look at the fields of application of economic analysis. Then uh, we'll uh, go more in depth into the concept of economic analysis. And then we start looking at the methods that uh, are mainly the value added and the economic cost benefit analysis. Uh, these methods will be briefly introduced in this class, but then will be largely studied in the, in the in next classes. So that will be the main object of the classes that, that will follow after this one. So let's start from the fields of uh, application. So here we are talking about the applicability of economic analysis uh, uh, by project classification. So we'll see um, if uh, and how project analysis can be applied to different types of project. Uh, first of all, we have a, a potential initial, initial distinction between private uh, and public uh, sector projects. Here, there is no particular relevance for economic analysis in the sense that both private and public um, uh, projects require the use of resources. So, uh, as uh, economic analysis is concerned about uh, the analysis of whether resources are employed uh, in an efficient way, there is no reason to limit uh, the um, economic analysis to private or public sector. So, economic analysis will be applied to both private and public sector projects. Then we have a distinction between uh, income projects, semi-income projects and non-income projects. Income projects uh, are projects where the revenues are sufficient to cover the cost of the project, also to generate some uh, profit margin for the private investors. Uh, semi-income projects are projects where there is some income generated but this is not sufficient to cover the cost, so the, 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 it's not sustainable from a financial uh, point of view and uh, the public um, uh, sustain is, is required. Non-income project is the extreme situation where the project is not generating income, it's only generating cost, so this is a pure uh, public, uh, uh, public funded uh, project. Uh, clearly, as you can understand, the uh, importance of economic analysis uh, uh, is higher for semi-income project and non-income project as compared to income projects, because in theory, the income projects uh, um, are self-sustainable in the sense that they are financed by private investors. They, they could not require the public intervention. However, it's also true that uh, uh, even though the project is financially sustainable, it's using resources. And if you are in a country where resources are scarce, it could happen that we have a market distortion between uh, market prices and uh, economic value of these resources. So in economic analysis could be used also in income projects uh, uh, where there is a financial sustainability of the project because the resources that are employed could have a different uh, economic value as compared to the market value that is what the private uh, investors pay for the execution of the project. Instead, uh, economic analysis becomes absolutely critical uh, in, in the case of semi-income project uh, and uh, non-income projects because in this specific case, uh, it's, mm, the projects require uh, public money, so the, the investment of public resources. And uh, as public resources are by definition scarce, it's very important to understand uh, whether these are applied uh, in, the, in the most efficient way. And so we'll see that we we'll have to estimate very carefully the economic output or the input, uh, sorry, the economic results of the input and the output uh, of the projects that are funded with the public with public money. So if we can apply in the end, we can say that we can apply economic analysis to all these categories of projects, but clearly uh, economic analysis become more relevant for same income and non-income projects. So now we look uh, uh, more in depth at the concept of economic uh, analysis. And a needed premise here to, to be made is that economic analysis has to be intended with respect to the policies that uh, um, 
compose the national economic plan. So <laughs> economic analysis clearly is to serve some kind of public objective. So clearly, typically governments have national economic plans that uh, set uh, um, objective parameters and criteria. And economic analysis clearly is a sense for the decision maker if it's interpreted in light of the national economic plan. In particular, uh, national economic plans uh, um, typically define objectives of a government. Here we have two examples of, exam of objective of a, of a government. that could be GDP growth or wealth distribution. But as we'll see in the next slides, we could have other uh, objective of national economic plan distinct from, uh, from these two. So these are the most relevant examples. That the, the most uh, often cited objectives, but there could be other national objective uh, for a government. So uh, we could see that we have a, a wider range of possible objectives. <laughs> uh, second, uh, um, the national economic plan uh, uh, typically sets parameters in sense of uh, uh, socioeconomic uh, profile uh, of um, the results. Uh, and not only that, uh, but also distribution and timing of the benefits. So if we are implementing policy that uh, um, will generate some benefits for some given objective, uh, one of the main uh, uh, problems that the policy maker has to do at the national or regional level is to understand uh, who is getting these benefits. And this is particularly important, as we'll see, when a country is characterized by uh, strong inequalities between social groups, so it's very important to understand, uh, determine the policies and actions and projects, uh, not only if they generate results and which kind of results, but also who is benefiting from these results, and if these results also contribute to the reduction of social uh, inequalities, social and economic inequalities. <laughs> Finally, initial economic plan is to set criteria uh, to understand uh, whether um, the policies uh, satisfy the socioeconomic objectives that have been stated for the national economic plan. So all that, ob objectives, parameters and criteria, represent the general framework uh, for, the, um, for a clear understanding of the usefulness of economic analysis. And clearly economic analysis will live to serve the objective of the national economic plan, we we'll have to be based on the parameters that are defined as critical national economic plan and uh, should account for the criteria needed for the valuation of policy and, and, and projects. <laughs> so now let's try to understand better <laughs> what is um, uh, the difference between economic and financial analysis. So in order to better understand the nature of economic analysis, it's useful to compare uh, it to the financial analysis that has been the, the object of the first classes of this course and um, was uh, realized, as you remember, mainly in the perspective of the private investor to uh, determine if the project was generating a financial surplus. So the difference between financial analysis and economic analysis will be interpreted in terms of objectives, uh, parameters and criteria that are clearly different for the two kinds of, of, of analysis. In fact, in the case of financial analysis, the, the main objective was uh, profit maximization, in particular commercial pro profit maximization. The investors in, were interested in particular to understand whether the project was creating value or not uh, for, for them, and uh, was exclusively based on, uh, for these reasons, on cash flows. On the contrary, um, the objective of economic analysis is broader and is uh, related to the maximization of socioeconomic benefits of different nature, as, as we'll see. So what matters in not all, is not only the commercial profit uh, and the financial surplus, but there are other considerations that have to be uh, included in the, in the analysis, as we'll explain in details in the next uh, slides and classes. As concerned the, the parameters, uh, we remember that uh, the cash flow were based on revenues and costs that were calculated on the basis of market prices. Uh, so that was the parameter um, the, the financial analysis was based on. 
The, econom the economic analysis that uh, we have to take into consideration economic prices that have to be adjusted to reflect the relative scarcity of, uh, of resources in the sense that we'll, uh, we'll really discuss that issues a bit but we'll, we'll, we'll go back on, on that topic because it's a relevant one for economic analysis. When uh, resources are scarce in a, in a given economic system, their economic value can be higher than the market price that they can observe at a given point in time. And so this means that uh, market prices have to be adjusted in order to reflect the true economic values. And uh, economic pricing, by the way, will be the object of the next three classes. Finally, the, um, the criteria for valuation is that uh, we remember for the from the classes on financial analysis where commercial profitability in the case of financial analysis. So what, what, uh, I, um, what we, we, say, we see together is, what we saw together is that uh, the return that was uh, earned by a project was compared for, with the expectation of return of the investor. And so the criteria was if uh, the commercial profitability was high enough to satisfy the expected returns of investors. Instead, uh, here the criteria are, are, are a broader, consistently with the definition of the objectives uh, of economic analysis, and are related to the magnitude and distribution of socioeconomic uh, benefits. So we we'll have to find criteria that instead of being related only to financial measures, are also uh, related to uh, uh, the um, broader socioeconomic benefits that uh, a government is setting in its national plans. <laughs> so, you know, um, to understand better uh, economic analysis, we can now give a look at national objectives. So, as I was mentioning before, uh, we, have, we can have a, a wide set of possible national objectives that are not only limited to GDP uh, growth rate. So here we have a checklist that is not exhaustive, but represents the most common uh, national objectives that the government can pursue. So can, these are the main object, objectives that economic analysis typically takes into consideration. So the first is clearly GDP growth rate. So the main concern of each government from an economic point of view is the growth rate of, of the gross domestic product of the country. So the first parameter on which you typically analyze the impact of the resources is the growth of GDP as, as a whole. But you could have a, a second uh, in, important uh, objective uh, in, uh, in national plans, that is not only the growth of GDP of national income, but also income redistribution. This is a particularly relevant objective when uh, a country is characterized by uh, strong uh, uh, inequalities um, of economic or social nature between uh, different social groups or between different regions. And so in this case, the objective uh, of a project could not be only the one to increase the GDP of, of the country, but also to favor the closing of the gap between disadvantaged groups or regions and uh, more advantaged uh, and more favored uh, groups or, or regions. So income redistribution is another critical objective that uh, we could find in, um, uh, in a national plan and so that could be relevant for economic analysis of a project. Then I could have a specific objectives of growth uh, in industry, agriculture, services depending on the industrial policy of, of the country and uh, on the reasons for favoring industry, agricultural services uh, context. <laughs> Another typical objective of a government or region is infrastructure improvements in terms of uh, transportation, communications and housing. And uh, as uh, we'll uh, discuss uh, infrastructure improvements that are also characterized by strong externalities so that economic pricing in this case is particularly important. <laughs> then uh, uh, we have employment opportunities. Clearly a government uh, uh, is highly concerned about uh, unemployment rates above all in those countries that have higher unemployment rates. So unemployment opportunities could be one other important uh, objective to be considered when uh, um, performing economic analysis. Education health uh, are uh, other critical sectors of, uh, 
of the society and the economy with uh, strong externalities uh, and, and therefore could be an object too important for economic analysis. Then we have economic independence from foreign entities. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, the, the government could be interested in endogenous growth without the uh, support of uh, external or foreign corporations or governments. So there could be some projects that more than others favor economic independence and this should be accounted for in economic analysis. Technological progress, uh, as, we, as we know, technological process is, is at, at basis of the growth processes of a country, so uh, technological progress could be, again, one important objective to be considered in economic analysis. Uh, balance of payments, uh, a country could have a, a problem of unbalance uh, in, in balance of payments, uh, could have more imports than exports, this is creating problems in the long run, so a project could be uh, uh, aimed at getting a, a better balance of payments uh, and so this will become in this case the objective of the economic analysis. Regional development, if there are some regions that for any given um, motivation uh, uh, need, uh, need um, um, development and growth more than others. <laughs> and finally there could be a project related to national security uh, and in this case this will become the objective for the economic analysis. So at this point we can summarize uh, uh, what we have said by looking at the difference that we have uh, between national versus project view. So as we have, we, have, we have understood at this point there is a difference between financial and economic analysis because the two are based on different perspectives, they have different objectives, they look at different parameters, they have different criteria, but they also imply a different view that is clearly broader in the case of donation and decision maker, uh, and this is, uh, is narrower if we look just at, uh, at the project and its direct returns. So in this table uh, we are looking uh, in detail at the difference between uh, the national view and the project view. So in the first column here on the right, we have uh, the element we take into consideration. And here we have uh, the national view about this element. And then the last column on the right, we have the project view about this, this, uh, this, um, uh, this, ele um, this element. So <coughs> the first element that is considered in this table is development. So national and projects have different view about development because the national view is about the public benefits for the society at large. So what matters is whether a project is direct and indirect effects that in the end will benefit uh, the, the economy of the country and the society as a whole. Whereas when we adopt a project view as we did in the, in the financial analysis in the first part of this course, we just look at the investor benefits, We're just looking at the direct consequences of the project for investors. Uh, and, and so you, you understand that in this case the view is much narrower. Then it concerns capital investment. Uh, when we adopt a national view, we are mainly interested of mobilizing capital for social welfare. So the, the, the reason why we are investing public resources is to increase uh, uh, the, the welfare of the society as, as a whole. Whereas what we saw in financial analysis is that you, the private investor decide to commit capital to a project in expectation for the expectation of a rate of return. So if there is no expectation of a rate of return, they will not invest capital into the project. Whereas national view does not necessarily require a, a rate of return on the resources that are mobilized. As concerned prices, this is one of the most relevant distinction that we have already anticipated, but that will be really the object of next classes, uh, is prices. So prices are intended in different way when we adopt a national versus a project view. In the case of project view, we already saw that uh, the predictions are based on market prices. So what matters are the prices at which you will be able to sell the products or services, and uh, the market price will buy the inputs for production. Uh, so this is the only, the only relevant uh, issue and the cash flow reflects the, the market conditions. 
However, as we have already uh, partially discussed and we'll see in greater detail in the next classes, um, the economic, the, there could be distortion in the market, so market prices could not reflect the true economic value. Uh, instead, uh, uh, as we'll uh, discuss in detail, the national view is interested in the economic value, that is the economic contribution that uh, resources give uh, uh, to the um, socioeconomic benefits. And in order, and economic value is different from, can be different from market prices. In order to uh, have a measure of economic values, we have to adjust market prices and to calculate what we'll define as shadow prices. So the shadow prices are relevant aspects that we'll be analyzing in detail in the, in the next classes. It's concerned the range uh, or the, of the um, consequences or the effects uh, of a project. Uh, uh, clearly, the project view is only interested in, in the direct effect uh, that a project is on, um, on, uh, for, the, for the investors. Whereas, uh, if you adopt a national view, you are interested in, in all the consequences that the project is not only for the direct stakeholder, but for all the economy as a whole, including the externalities that are the positive and negative effects that the project is uh, for other sectors of economy, for, for, the, for regions, uh, or, or for, for the welfare in, in general of, of, of in a country. It's concerned uh, the discount rate. We, we saw that in the case of a project, it's mainly determined uh, looking at the cost of capital, so we have provided a detailed explanation of what the cost of capital is. It basically reflects the expectation of return of the different kinds of investors, so shareholders and creditors. Uh, in the case of uh, the national view, clearly we cannot just look at the cost of capital because the public resources that are employed in, uh, in a project have not only a cost of capital that is expressed in financial terms, but there is an opportunity cost that is, uh, a, is a broader meaning. Moreover, several of the objectives of uh, the national uh, view are non-financial, and so we need to adopt a modified version of the discount rate uh, that will define at the moment social discount rate, and then we'll analyze in the, in the next uh, classes. Here we have uh, other, other, other elements uh, as concerned the foreign exchange. Uh, in the case of project view, this is only relevant for project requirements in the sense that if a project requires importing some resources for production or if the products are, are sold uh, on foreign markets, the foreign exchange is relevant because we'll, in the end it will affect, given all the other conditions, the inflows and the outflows of the project. So the foreign exchange is relevant only to the extent that is an impact on the cash flow of the project. Instead, uh, uh, as we were also mentioning before, the foreign exchange in the national view is relevant because it's an impact on the balance of, of payments of the country. So clearly this view is much broader than the one that we have for the project. On the case of employment, national view and project view are really, are really different. Uh, in the case of project view, when you analyze an investment project, you are mainly interested in the exploitation of uh, the labor force. So you are interested to know what the labor force will, will be and what the cost will be for this labor cost. So you are not really interested in whether the, the project is creating new jobs. Uh, whereas clearly the main mm, priority that you have in the national view is the job creation issue. So you are, you are more interested about the fact that the project is creating uh, resources, uh, sorry, creating jobs independently of the cost that this job will live off for the project. It's concerned, it said, the technology. Um, in the case of our project view, technology is an enabling factor uh, for getting a, a higher market share. So if you have superior technology, you will be able to sell more competitive products and so your market share will be concerned, will, be, will increase. Instead, uh, uh, in the national view, technology matters uh, uh, for the public benefits that the technology is creating for, uh, for, 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 the, for the society as, as a whole. As concerned, natural resources, clearly, uh, when you are planning a project and you have a project view, 
you are interested to understand if there are enough natural resources in that country uh, that uh, can guarantee the, the, the needed input for production or you are concerned whether you can easily import these resources from other countries you know, that run the project. So you are just interested in natural resources as an input for production and so for the realization, the operation, um, operational objective of the project. Instead, uh, uh, national view is broader uh, and uh, is more long-term oriented. Uh, so, in theory, when you adopt a national view, you are more interested in the conservation of natural resources and uh, you are interested in preserving environment. So, um, too intensive exploitation of natural resources could, first of all, deprive the country of its natural re wealth, uh, but it could also have uh, disastrous consequences for environment. So there are negative externalities connected to natural resources that in theory you consider in the national view, but you are, do not consider in, in the project view, unless clearly externalities uh, are included into, into market prices. Finally, as concerned the last element, that is location. Uh, typically, when you take a project view, you are mainly interested in uh, um, minimizing operating costs. So you, you look for a location where the cost uh, of the inputs are lower. Or uh, you can choose a location that, for example, is uh, characterized by a wider availability of services, uh, better infrastructure and so on. But you are interested in location as a factor in, uh, enabling a better performance of the project. Instead, uh, uh, when you have a national view, you could have an opposed uh, idea about location because you are mainly interested about the economic stimulation that the project will give to some local uh, e economy. So it could be that instead uh, uh, you prefer that the project is realized in a, disadvan in a disadvantaged region uh, so clearly the pro this will be a disadvantage for the project but will be an advantage for the, for the, for the country because it would allow the, that region to catch up with uh, uh, the most advantaged re region. So clearly the national project view here bring to some uh, um, potentially uh, opposed uh, um, idea about, about the location. Uh, or it could happen that uh, from the perspective of the national decision maker there is some location that for some reason has some, a particular strategic value and so independently on the wealth distribution of the advantage or disadvantage of, of that region uh, you prefer that the project is localized in that, in that particular region. So at this point the, the economic analysis, the concept of economic analysis should be clear at least in general terms. Clearly now we'll enter more and more into the details of the economic analysis. But what really matters at this point is to understand that economic analysis is a completely different set of objectives, parameters and criteria is, com is, uh, is uh, compared to financial analysis in the sense that uh, these objective parameters and criteria normally re reflects uh, a broader view that is the national view is opposed to the project view that instead is much narrower much more focused on the benefits of private investor, much more focused on the direct cash flow generated by a project than uh, on uh, the um, uh, broader benefits for the collective, the collective uh, society. So the last uh, uh, issue of this class is about the methods of economic analysis. <laughs> so the methods will be studied in depth in, uh, in this part of the course. Uh, but uh, it's important to precise uh, from, uh, from, from now that we will uh, we'll see two main methods for uh, economic analysis. Uh, one is the cost-benefit analysis uh, that is also abbreviated as ECBA. Uh, and the other is value-added that is also abbreviated as VA. So these are the two uh, methods for economic analysis that we'll study in this part of the course. The main difference between the two uh, differences will be analyzed in detail in the next classes, but the main difference that we can now uh, highlight um, are, are the following. That um, value added is uh, concerned about uh, the contribution that uh, the use and the production of resources uh, provide to national income. So uh, value added measure the contribution 
of resources to, uh, of a project uh, and the project inputs and outputs to national income. Instead, the ECBA is more concerned about shadow pricing. So the idea here is that uh, market uh, uh, values uh, are distorted, they do not reflect the true economic value for, for the economy and the society as a whole. So first of all, I correct the market prices by calculating the shadow prices. And then once I have calculated the shadow prices that reflects, at least are a better proxy of the, of the true economic value, I can simply use this shadow prices in order to calculate the net benefits of a project. So the idea is that in the case of value added, I use uh, uh, market values to analyze uh, uh, the contribution of the project to, to a broader set of objectives. In the case of ECBA, I first correct the market values by calculating shadow prices. At that point, I use uh, shadow prices uh, to calculate the net benefits. So from a methodological point of view, <laughs> clearly the two uh, meters will uh, imply and involve different kinds of uh, activities and, and different procedures. But what is important to, to stress, however, is that in theory, if the two methods are correctly applied, uh, um, they should bring to the same uh, result. And um, this can be explained by uh, looking at a very simple example that is surely simplistic in its definition, but that is useful to understand uh, what are the main differences between ECBA and VA, that then clearly will be analyzing detail from a methodological point of view, but that once that you apply the two methods in the correct way, in the end you get the same uh, result about the contribution that the project give uh, to uh, the broader socioeconomic objective of, of a government. So <laughs> let's assume as a starting uh, assumption uh, that a group of villagers is now uh, employed uh, locally in some given region, uh, producing an income of, of, of 10. So income here is intended as the wages that these villagers uh, receive in exchange of, the, of, the, of their work. So it does not matter at the moment if these are profits or, or wages, it's just income that uh, these villages, uh, villages get for the current activities that are uh, realized in, the, in that particular um, uh, location. So let's assume that we want to analyze a, a new project uh, that will generate an output of 100. This is the commercial value and would include materials for 50, wages for 30, and profits for 20. So what does it mean? That, that we are evaluating a, a new project that is generating a total value of 100, but in order to generate this uh, total value 100, is requiring the employment of materials for 50 and wages of 30. So from a commercial point of view, that is a point of view of, uh, of the investor, <laughs> this project is generating, so this project is generating a commercial profit of 20, that is the surplus that is generated for the private investor. So the financial analysis will just focus on this element. So the financial analysis will just say that this project is convenient because it's generating a positive uh, uh, surplus of 20 for the private investors. So let's see instead um, how uh, the economic um, cost-benefit analysis and value-added analysis interpret this uh, uh, project uh, with respect to the broader uh, socioeconomic objectives uh, of, of the government. So this is uh, uh, the economic cost-benefit analysis interpretation. So here the benefits are 100. Um, here we are not assuming uh, um, market distortion, so we are taking market values as inputs for the uh, ECBA, but uh, clearly uh, in the more realistic setting that we'll see in the next classes, we should correct uh, market values in order to get shadow prices. But let's assume that now we have not this problem. So the benefits are the commercial benefits of 100. The materials are 50. Uh, 
in the perspective of, of, of the, the, the society, the wages are not a cost because they are, they are increased wages for the population. So it's, there, there is here a matter of job creation. <laughs> and so this cannot be subtracted by the cost. But we have a cost that in the case of the ACBA is interpreted as an opportunity cost that is represented by the labor of 10 that was previously uh, accruing to, to the villagers and that now represent a foregone value as the villagers will now employ the new project. So the costs here are represented by the 50 of the materials and by 10 that is the opportunity cost of the labor that is foregone because of the employment of the villagers in the new project. So the total cost of 60 and the net benefits uh, within the perspective of the ECBA analysis are equal to, <laughs> to 40. So let's look at uh, um, the, what happens with the value added instead. In the case of the value added, we have again the value of the output that is 100. The materials uh, uh, are a cost. So in theory, the net value added will be, will be, will be 50. Uh, again, net value added does not include the wages because uh, uh, they not, do not represent a contribution to the, to the national um, income. So they represent a contribution to national income. So they are not a cost uh, in the perspective of the, of, of the national government. So apparently the, nation, the net value added uh, uh, will be higher than the, the results of the net benefits we get from ECBA analysis. But if we uh, apply the value added analysis correctly, we should also consider that the, the, the value added is not properly uh, 50. But we have to consider that we have sacrificed 10 of value added by uh, re-employing the, the villagers into the new product, project uh, uh, and, and therefore by sacrificing the, the existing activity. So if we consider the cost of employing workers in the new product, again we have a correct net value added of, of 40, so we get the same value as before. So we, here I would like to stress two initial differences between ECBA and, and, and value added. Uh, as concern uh, uh, the, in particular the pricing of, uh, of, of labor. In the case of the ECB analysis, we saw that the labor uh, was priced at its shared of value, that is the opportunity cost, uh, that is the value that is foregone by realizing the new project. Um, so in the economic terms, uh, uh, the labor is equal to the value foregone of employing the labor in the project. Instead, in the case of the value added analysis, what we uh, consider is that the actual contribution of wages to, to value added must be reduced or the value added sacrificed by employing the, the workers in the project. So the, the, the results are the same, but in the, in, the, in the case of the CBA, we first determine the shade of value and we directly use the shade of value into the calculation. In the second case, we include the wages into the calculation of on net value added and only after we ask the problem whether we should consider the value added that is sacrificed and so we, we, we correct the value added but at, at a second step. Whereas in the case of the ECB analysis, the opportunity cost or the far, foregone, foregone value of the labor cost is immediately directly considered in the calculation of the net benefits of, of a project. So this uh, class is, uh, uh, is finished. Uh, I thank you for the attention and uh, I remind you that as usual if you want to um, look at additional materials about topics of this class, you can refer to the course uh, website. Thank you.